Hi, welcome to this new episode of the pedagogical series, Little Rascals. It's created by Nick Walker of Ahunsa College and myself to keep the spotlight on pedagogy between Rascals meetings each year in June. Not taking place this year. So today I have the pleasure of talking with Gil Hoffman of Cijap Edward Montpetit, who's going to be talking about making online teaching accessible. And Gil is going to be sharing his effective use of uh, tools such as Top Hat, not talking about Fred Astaire here, L Loom, which is a screen recording tool that he's finding very helpful, and also what he has found to be very useful, Dropler, which uh, is uh, a place to keep stuff in the cloud. And he's also going to be sharing how he uses the Moodle in his teaching. So let me uh, move on now to the Zoom exchange with, uh, with Gil, and I'll pass it on to my colleague, Frank. So I'd like to uh, welcome Gil Hoffman from uh, Cégep Edward Montpetit, who's going to talk to us today about uh, how he's adapting to this new environment of online teaching, and he's actually enjoying it. So, so Gil, tell us a little bit about some of the things you're doing. Uh, hi, thank you, um, Frank. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a, an adventure uh, with uh, uh, some successes and a, and a, and a few uh, backfires, of course. Uh, but uh, generally, we're I, I find it interesting. Uh, I uh, believe that there is a place for technology in teaching, and given the circumstances now, much much more than ever. Um, and that being said, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the use of technology now to finish up this season has, has become uh, really, really, really important. And uh, as a teacher, I have been trying to uh, navigate what I need to do to give uh, good results, uh, you know, uh, results that we can trust at, uh, to uh, the college and education to the students. Excellent. So you, you, you're going to tell us a little about some of the, your favorite tools. You have a few that make your teaching much more effective. Yes. Uh, well, of course, uh, Zoom. Zoom is number one. Everybody's uh, pretty much uh, using that. But there are others that I've been looking at that uh, uh, sort of will um, uh, help to... Uh, um, make uh, you know uh, me feel better about the results I get and uh, allow the students to uh, um, do what they need to do uh, to give me good results as well. Uh, so um, uh, final evaluations has been a, a big topic um, and so uh, I've been researching different ways to how do we give a, you know an exam to people who are at home and uh, as uh, assure that they are, you know, remain honest, and that we can trust the results. At the same time, also maybe uh, allowing the students to, uh, uh, you know, uh, do it in a way that doesn't require them to have, you know, too much knowledge and change too much of what they do normally. So, I've been looking at a program called uh, Top Hat, which was offered uh, to teachers. I think. Um, uh, quite a bit on social media uh, as a way to give exams that are more reliable. Uh, there's no 100% way to uh, to do it, but uh, more reliable because uh, if uh, they have a laptop or a computer, and that of course is always an issue, um, I've, uh, most of my students have one um, or can uh, get access to one, and uh, so uh, they will be able to write their exam uh, in front of their laptops or computers and, and we will, uh, as teachers, have uh, the ability to watch them through the camera. Uh, they uh, are told that they can't get up and get a coffee or go to the washroom, so it's a timed exam. And at the same time, uh, things that uh, are no-nos like uh, taking screenshots and looking away at a, at a grammar book on the side are, are monitored by the camera, so we get a report. Oh, you're a nasty one. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I try to do that, but in the end, I think it's how we organize the exam that will actually um, make the biggest difference, because, you know, technology works, you know, m most of the time, and of course, not all the time. So, 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 so Gil, 
Gil, is this uh, downloadable or, or is it available uh, uh, in the cloud? Do they have to have a password? How do they sign in up? Is it relatively easy to make the transition to that page? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, uh, you uh, contact the company or the top hat. Uh, they will teach you how to use it. Uh, they will sign up your students. And all the students really need is to be using the Chrome browser. Uh, they uh, uh, subsequently uh, download a program that will uh, uh, proctor the exam. And through Top Hat, uh, you will get a report uh, and, and be able to set it up. It's quite simple. Uh, if you use Moodle or a quiz uh, programs, you can you can do it. They'll walk you th through it, and um, it, it seems uh, and it's free, by the way, uh, for this the rest of the session. So uh, it's excellent, uh, excellent. Spot. You, you you have another one called Loom that you like to use. You told me. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is now now we have to do our lessons. You know, we can, don't have the whiteboard at home. We don't have the. Uh, possibility of doing the lesson in the, in the same way. So uh, this uh, program called Loom uh, is a video conferencing uh, uh, program. Uh, it, it's similar to many, many other programs, I imagine, like, uh, uh, oh, I can't even think of the names right now. But uh, basically, yeah, screencast o -matic, yeah, screencast. Uh, uh, but uh, it's simple to use, and uh, the Loom people have been very, very generous, and they have offered it a, a lifetime, free for a lifetime if you want it, uh, just by putting in your college email. And uh, uh, so you can do your lesson on your laptop with all the tools that you need. Uh, you describe your PowerPoints, or you use a whiteboard, and uh, you can do it with uh, a, a, a with your face on or off, uh, so it's it's really easy to use, and uh, um, it's free and it's free forever. <laughs> and I like it because it's simple. Right now, I'm not in the mood to learn too much, too many things. Uh, Students kind of overwhelmed with technology, right? <laughs> Students neither. They don't want to be troubled. I know. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it's uh, it turns the video into uh, an MP4. You get a link. Uh, you can then what I do is I, I copy it to my YouTube channel and then relink it to my Moodle accounts or send it off in a in a Mio. Uh, otherwise, you can just get a link, uh, a longer link, and send it off uh, in a Mio or uh, any and in a text message, and people can watch your uh, presentation. Excellent. Do you have one more? like to share, I think. Yeah, um, well, my, my go-to, the one that I've always uh, loved uh, since uh, I found out that you had to pay me for Dropbox and Box.net and I didn't want to, uh, <laughs> is Dropler. It's called Dropler, D-R-O-P-L-R. And uh, by the way, it's free if you want to use it on a one-time basis. What it did for me that I couldn't do with Box.net and Dropbox was if my video uh, correction of a composition was too long, because they made too many errors or I took too much time, uh, uh, I would be not able to email the, uh, the correction to my student. But Dropler, uh, which is a cloud-based uh, company, uh, allowed me to take any size video, gave me a short uh, URL that I could send out, and it didn't matter how, how big the file was, uh, I could send it by email. So that was one thing. Uh, the other thing is since uh, I uh, purchased it, uh, you can do a screencasting, you can do uh, screenshots with annotations, you can do so many things that uh, I, I need to do uh, and want to do. Uh, so it's, it's great, and uh, it's a great way to keep important uh, files, documents, videos, because I always know where it is. It's in my bar at the top. I just drag and drop it in. I can organize it into folders, and, and I love this program. Oh, excellent, excellent. That's good. And you told me also you, you're using Moodle quite effectively. Yes, yes. Um, so even in, uh, before uh, COVID-19, I, I uh, prefer uh, something more visual like Moodle to something like Leia, which uh, you know, it's easy to use, but, you know, it gave me a bunch of links. So uh, I, I set up my course in Moodle in um, uh, a format. Uh, should I show you? And yes, that would be great. Okay. Visual, visual. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share my screen if it works. Hope, hopefully it will. Okay. Um, 
share and optimize and okay tell me if if we actually get this under share uh can you see that i can i see omnivox oh good okay perfect so uh Moodle is down here somewhere and i'll open up uh my basic english course for you to see so uh, you know i start with the pictures and the and the color of the book so they know what to get i give them some resources at the top so they always have access to uh, the resources that they might use on a regular basis and then what i like to do is is uh, put each lesson in its own little uh page so that um when they get there they can uh see what's going on uh, nowadays, and this is done with Loom, by the way, nowadays I'll put the uh, video lesson online uh, after I've given it on Zoom for those who come, but because we're asynchronous, some people won't have access to it, so I'll put the video lesson on. Uh, I give them a quiz. Now, I've finally figured out how to give them quizzes in uh, an interesting way. Before, I was asking them to take pictures of their book and send it to me, and I'd be getting maybe three or four pictures with no names on it. Now, uh, what I do is I give them a, a form. I learned how to make forms. I took my quiz, turned it into a form, and uh, now they just type in the answers and I have everything in one place with their name on it, which is cool. Is that Google Forms, uh, Gil? Uh, no, it's Word. I, I went on to YouTube and figured out how to turn my, my uh, text into a you know form. It, you have to work with the developer box and then, uh, you can actually share those. I, I've managed to put up a sign-up sheet by sharing it. Uh, I have links to ESL Blues, which is practice for uh, grammar. Um, so uh, what, what I like about this is as they go each week, they, they can open up a new window. They get the information they need. Uh, I can put uh, YouTube videos in there. Uh, I can uh, make it much more like a page, much more visual, a lot of links. Uh, I find it, uh, you know. Gil, how are you notifying students about material in Moodle? Because apparently there's not a, like a pop-up in Moodle to say, go and do this assignment. So how are, are you using Mio? I use Mio a lot, yeah. And uh, uh, I, uh, I also use videos in Mio as a way of, of, of uh, communicating, uh, you know. I can, uh, uh, record myself on Zoom or on Loom or something, and then just send it out, and I'll I'll say you know I'll watch this or listen to this. And I can get a lot more information than trying to write it out uh, because you know I uh, I've come to the conclusion that they'll read a few lines but not too many more. <laughs> so you're 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 really creative and dynamic in using these tools. How, how about the students? How are they adjusting? Are they uh, are they joining you in this uh, new uh, learning environment? There's a learning curve. Uh, um, I, I remember trying to, uh, well, for me and for them, uh, initially when I started using Zoom, I didn't realize I needed to have all the pages open to be able to access them once we were online, <laughs> which was a bit embarrassing. But uh, uh, okay. after that, uh, you know, initially I'd get some people on, uh, they'd be uh, embarrassed, they wouldn't react, they'd uh, not have a camera on. Uh, their mics were off, <laughs> so I'd have to show them, you know, where to go and how to go and how to get them to react, you know, to uh, something I'm saying by giving me a thumbs up and so on. So we did that. Um, uh, I taught them how to do a virtual backgrounds like I have, uh, and things like that. So we spend a little bit of time with that. Now I'm finding that, you know, I get a lot more people prepared to uh, show their faces and interact. Uh, sometimes I'll just ask them to. Uh, I've been doing uh, uh, speaking exams uh, online on Zoom, so I'd have two of them at a time plus me and have them interview each other. And that was interesting, and there I insist on them being, uh, you know, faced, uh, well, they, they need to show their faces and then we do that. And uh, it's, it's good. It's, uh, in that sense, I think we get closer than maybe we would in a classroom because, uh, you know, uh, we, we interact face to face, there's just us, and, and, and that's great. I like that. That's fantastic. I always, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I always worry that, um, 
you know, technology is going to fail me sometime, <laughs> and it, it, it invariably does. But uh, what I've done for the rest of the session is I, I've um, tried to be very clear. I repeat, I make it, uh, I tell them they can talk to me anytime on Mio, and I'll Zoom with them if they want to. I have virtual office hours where uh, I'll be sitting here waiting for them to come and see me. And um, I think, uh, yeah, it's getting it's getting better. And if we had to continue this down the line, I'm sure that the students would be uh, much more comfortable with the technology and uh, teachers as well. Excellent. Any final words to teachers in uh, this uh, this new uh, challenging environment? Uh, yeah, I I I, th I think the trick is uh, you have to decide how you're going to do it and try to keep it simple. Find the best solution for you and for the students. Um, uh, yeah, keep it simple. And uh, what I've done, for example, in the final exam, not only am I using a program that sort of uh, maybe allows us to have more control, but I'm changing the uh, format in a, in a way where their copying just is not a, something they can do. It'll be a, a, an opinion text. Everyone will have to have something different. You know, the question formation will be based on a picture that they see at the moment they open the thing. So I don't expect to see five times the same questions. That's good. It makes it interesting for you. And just what levels are you teaching at the college? Uh, I'm teaching uh, the A levels, uh, one, uh, what we call 100. So uh, the basic uh, English level and the one above, the 101. So uh, yeah, the first two A-level courses, so, so we get to do all the hard slogging to get them ready for the people in the B courses who uh, are, are, are always amazed how good they are. <laughs> I'm sure they are. It sounds great. Well, well, Gail, thank you so much for sharing, and uh, we'll be yeah. sharing this with teachers uh, shortly. Thanks very thank much. Thank you so much. Okay. Keep thank going. you. Bye Try now. Bye. Okay. Uh, let's have a look now at how uh, Gil uses Z Loom in his teaching. So let me log in here to... I wanted to talk to you about Loom today, and Loom is a, a video conferencing software. It's free to uh, anyone. It's uh, really interesting because there are many things that you can do with it. Um, you can screencast with the camera or screen only or cam only. Um, you can use your laptop. Here you have some controls. You can make your picture big. You can uh, use uh, a picture of yourself. Um, you can make it full screen if you want, um, which is really cool. It's easy to use. Let's see, how do I just go away? By the way, you can, you have a uh, a tool here that allows you to um, to do um, hmm. oh here we go let's go we'll make it small again you have a tool that allows you to highlight uh, certain areas that you're referring to and um, as well um, what I like is um, if you are screencasting let's see screen only for example if I screencast now Okay, so it gives me a countdown. Uh, um, it gives me a, uh, a, a bar at the end where I can actually mark up uh, all kinds of things and what I really, and choose colors by the way, I can use my colors. Uh, and what I like about it is that uh, subsequently after you write, uh, about two seconds later it goes away. So. Uh, uh, it's very good for explaining things. Okay, and so that's one of the tools. Uh, there, you can pause. You can um, do many, many things. You can trim your videos after. It's very, very easy to use. And if I have to recommend a program, it, it's one that's free. Uh, by the way, it's free forever if you're in education by uh, giving your uh, email address. Okay, let's now move on to Dropler and see how Gil is using that in his teaching. So let me go in here now. Uh, 
Hi, um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, Dropler. Dropler is a little drop that you find at the top of the screen. And then if you put uh, view all drops, then you can actually um, see more of what is here. Um, it is a place where I share, uh, I keep all my information, pictures, videos, make videos, uh, screencasts, and so on. So I can keep all my things here. I can create boards, uh, what they call boards, which are kind of folders, where I can um, all kinds of things. And um, when I want to share this with anyone, all I have to do is click on a short link. It will save a short link. And then I can send it off by email to anybody, anytime. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, there are many things I can do with it, uh, including uh, take screenshots, screenshots with annotations, and recording in HD video, so I can make uh, recordings of my programs or my uh, laptop. I can add plugins, and it's a really great program, uh, which doesn't care what size uh, the file is, um, and I highly recommend it. Let's move on now to how Gil uses Top Hat. So let me go into Top Hat. And uh, finally, um, I want to talk to you about uh, Top Hat, which was the uh, last one that I mentioned. So uh, tophat.com, great. Um, for doing many things, but I, I like this one, run the supervised test from anywhere. So all students really need is um, a laptop with a camera and Chrome, Google Chrome. Uh, they'll download one program and you can have a proctored exam. Uh, they have other options. Building a test, uh, an online test is easy and um, they will help you with that, so um, I like that. Uh, there are assessments, you can do lectures. Um, let's go back here. So uh, Top Hat Classroom, they have, uh, they have videos to explain it. And so I hope you enjoyed that exchange with, uh, with Gil Hoffman. He's uh, shared some tools that I didn't know about, and he, he seems to be excited about his teaching. He seems to find students are joining him more and more in his teaching and he's look looking forward to working with these tools in uh, the fall term in uh, in the autumn so uh, thanks very much uh, for sharing gil and uh, if you'd like to share some of your successes in online teaching you can reach me at uh, frank at frankvonkowski.com bye now <laughs>